Hey, what's up guys, how we doing? So, as we all get back to Supercross and, and you know, kind of put the Stank Dog, Cade Clayson drama behind us, which was awesome by the way, I really love the fact that Arena Cross is back. Arena Cross is back guys, so I'm definitely gonna try paying more attention to it. Um, with that said, what's gonna happen in San Diego? We got some issues, but before we get into it, I wanna thank EBC Breaks, that's ebcbreaks.com for those of you. Uh, go give them a follow on Instagram, check them out. Uh, Epic Garage Designs, I'm in the Epic Garage studio today. And Coach Rob at completeracingsolutions.com. If you need a training program, Coach Rob is the smartest, most educated man when it comes to that. He's gonna make you stronger, more durable. He's just, uh, he, he's got programs for everybody. So, all right guys, let's get into this thing. Everybody love everybody! You all know exactly who I am. Hey, so every once in a while we get a story in this sport where we go, yeah, that, that's, that's karma coming around. That's somebody who really needed a break getting a break. And we got that story with Carson Mumford. Okay, so for those of you that don't remember, Carson Mumford was groomed by the Geico Honda team. Like he was straight up going to be one of the guys. Uh, he was the next in line. Then the team folds, and he's just left without a ride. What do you do? I mean, all those guys were left scrambling. Honda made room for Jet and Hunter. Joe tried out and got onto Pro Circuit. That worked out. But Mumford was kind of out in the cold. It really sucked for him. So what he ended up doing is Michael Lindsay started that team. And to say their equipment was subpar would be an understatement. They were on Hondas, but man, trust me, they were the stories that you hear behind the scenes. The bike was not competitive. And when you take a young kid who's just entering the pro ranks and they don't have a competitive bike and they get smoked, it really messes with their confidence. And Carson Mumford's just too good. And then he had, uh, last year, right before the season started, he had a massive concussion and was battling that for most of the year. Then this year, he looks great. He's still on the Suzuki. And you guys know how I feel about Suzuki. They're not competitive. They're just not. Um, they're good bikes, they're decent, they've done everything they can with those 250s, but they're still Suzuki's. They're just not on the level of the other brands. So while he was riding as good as he possibly could have uh, on that bike, uh, it, just, it just wasn't competitive. But one of the great stories is now he's on Pro Circuit Kawasaki. He'll be filling in for Austin Forkner, uh, and he's gonna get a great, like, a great chance. Yes, he's coming off a badly broken arm, but hey, you take these opportunities when they come, and good for, good for, good for Carson Mumford. I'm really excited to see him get out there and, and see what he can do on a real bike, on a real team. He's a upper level talent. I mean, kid works his ass off. He really does. Uh, I'm a Mumford fan, and I, and I really do hope that this leads to him having a far more successful career because a lot of guys would have probably hung it up um, being dealt the cards he's been dealt. But no, nah, he's, he's toughed it out and just keeps getting back up off the mat and, and fighting. So you gotta respect that. Now, to San Diego. Guys, if you saw, I went over to 2-3 Media. Check out his Instagram, it's really good. Uh, he's doing some good stuff over there. Or I'm sorry, 23 Media. Um, he was at Snapdragon Stadium once watching the monster trucks this weekend. And to say it was muddy would be an understatement. It looked like a big old bowl of chocolate soup inside the Snapdragon Stadium. Now that's, that's the same dirt that they have to use for the Supercross this weekend. Now if you check the forecast, it looks pretty decent in San Diego. But this is not like, it's not like it's the Vegas desert. This dirt, I mean, it's gonna take some time to dry that thing out, to build a track, and then you have to recover it and hope some of these storms that are periodically running through California don't roll through. The chances of us having a completely dry racetrack for Saturday are well, they're pretty low, man. And, and I don't know what that dirt's gonna look like when these guys go to build it. I don't know if they'll be able to build this track until like Thursday or Friday. I mean, it looked bad. So, guys, as far as getting a dry race, uh, I don't know. It, it kind of makes me think like, what if they just, I mean, it, it's tough because I know that Feld's in the business of making money. They're a profitable company. They have both monster trucks and dirt bikes and they use the same dirt for both of them. But if this dirt had been covered, we'd be looking at a, a really good race weekend, but since they were using it out in, the, out in the rain, I mean, did they dump lime in it? Like, what's gonna go on? Like, 
it was a lot of question marks. Um, and I was told the reason that they canceled Oakland was a lot of the teams didn't want to risk having lime on their bikes and, and ruining all that stuff again because the monster trucks had been in it the week before and they dumped a bunch of lime. Uh, maybe they didn't lime. Well, if they limed the one in San Diego, they were wasting their time because there was puddles and it would have ruined all the monster truck stuff. I'm sure there was a little bit in there. But, and I imagine that probably isn't the same dirt or the lime from a few years ago is still not active. But needless to say, uh, the dirt works guys, I know they work miracles and I'm praying for another miracle so we don't have a mud race because I don't like mud races. I think mud races suck. I think it really, I mean, it's okay to have one once in a while, but in general, I like to see the guys demonstrate their talents, all that hard work, all that testing, all that training. A lot of it you throw out the window and just kind of, it's just kind of a crapshoot when you do mud racing. But anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, look for uh, Cliff Notes this week. Cliff Notes coming back. I'll get you guys updated on all the latest stories and the top 10 guys. And, um, and then our, our live show with Johnny, Coach, and our guest. I believe our guest is either, well, I don't want to jinx it, but I know Cheyenne Harmon's up on, he's going to be one of our guests pretty, here pretty soon. Um, and then... I'm going to do a live, I'm going to go back to the live prediction show on Saturdays, guys. So after you watch Race Day Live, in between Race Day Live and the race, there's about an hour, I'm going to be doing a live prediction show. Uh, I, I did those for the Outdoor Nationals. It was a lot of fun. I got a lot of you guys in there. I love interacting with you guys and putting my picks out there. Uh, after practice, I usually am pretty accurate. If I guess before practice, I'm not that accurate. But if I can see practice, I usually have a good idea how things are going to play out that night. So anyway. Thanks, and remember to subscribe. You guys have a good day.